Mr. Ali, you two business experts. Thank you for having me. And I hope you had uh, some nice experiences during the exercise. I actually <laughs> monitor elections. So I have good uh, knowledge of the election itself. Oh, okay, great. So uh, we would need you to, uh, to give us a sense of what is before the incoming administration. Right. Uh, like you, we all know that when there is new administration like this, Nigeria are expectant and we expect a lot to be mm -hmm. delivered. However, it just has to be a short-term plan, a medium plan and a long-term plan because clearly it has four years to rule. And these four years, there must be something that is very, very important for Nigeria. So if you look at the for short-term, I would advise that we have high standard or uh, cost of living. So it has to be caught no matter how it is because they just spend a lot because of it's a combination of a lot of things that comes together so for us to purchasing power is very very low so there must be a deliberate uh intention to make sure there is more food availability the supply chain process is is better you know more security so there must be a, a roadmap in short term because you know unfortunately this government that is coming in cannot tamper with the the current budget they can only do maybe supplementary budget so they have to manage the current budget and work with it. so consequently it simply means that they have to look at it very well and make sure they make the best use of it very very key. and looking at medium term plan that nigeria must work on is human development now human capital development has become very vital to us. we need to create jobs in nigeria because if you look at it we have over 33 percent of nigerian youth that do not have job we are not even talking about underemployment and a lot of things and this is also fall on gov so there must be enabling environment creation of job intention and then for long time plan if you look if you ask me now there's what we call national development plan 2021 to 2025 that succeeded the ERGP. Now, looking at that development plan, I think the new government need to come on board and make sure that the state buy into it and local government buy into it because that's the problem. If you look at Nigerian stakeholder itself, we are not even more educated about the national development plan and this will affect us. And that's why, if you look at the then uh, 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 development plan that has to do with needs, needs translate to seed, seed to, you know, to look at to needs. needs. So yeah. these are what we need. So we need a, a project, a development plan that every stakeholder, the private, the public, you know, the artisan, everybody will key into it and there will be development. Perhaps if that is not same as early enough, Nigeria will believe that maybe it is the same rhetoric and the same thing that we have been seeing. So I think that should be immediate short-term plan, medium plan, medium-term plan, and long-term plan that will engender development in Nigeria. Well, now there's one thing that would definitely be prominent in the in the coming weeks, right. which is fuel subsidy. Right. This You talked about the budget. Of course, the new administration will have to continue with this budget. And right. this, uh, this budget we are running now has a provision that fuel subsidy will run into mid- yeah. 2023 and then there will be no subsidy it's a big question for the incoming administration to answer and i think it's too big for them to chill now the current government said by june there will be removal of subsidy mm -hmm. now you agree with me that apart from abuja and other big cities some states are already buying fuel at over 300 naira so i can tell you i've moved mm -hmm. around and i think it's only abuja maybe mm -hmm. some part of lagos some even in, in other northern part people buy fuel at above 300 naira already mm -hmm. so now coming in now to say you want to remove the subsidy yes it's good to remove the subsidy but there must be cautious optimism because Nigerians are seeing the uh, the uh, purchasing power being difficult now. So there must, if I would advise, this current government must be very, very meticulous and make sure they remove this thing gradually. It cannot be removed once because if you remove it once, it will bring a lot of negative effect to the economy. You know, the transport will be, you know, there will be a lot of, even inflation, everything will, will, will like double. So I advise this current government to go back. They have two months to two months to plan before they take over and make sure they bring out a possible uh, solution that will encourage us to remove this subsidy perhaps if you want to re remove the subsidy you must bring up a uh, what we call shock absorber that nigerians we you know if you recall even this present government pro uh, uh promise or 
proposed to give each individual 5,000 Naira then? Most of us actually said no. Because if you look at it, it's, not a, it's money you are giving for people to spend immediately. You must create a solution. Perhaps if you look at other economics, like maybe Indian, there is, no, there is a card that people that are less, you know, in terms of uh, social strata, consider. If people go to Rwanda, they have poor, poor of the poor, we have medium poor, you know, they have, you know, they have four strata that you know that these people with this card, they can easily go to the market and these are the range of things they will benefit from. So that is what we have. To, so we have to look at our economy and move beyond where we are coming and provide a solution that will consider the poor, you know, the, the rich and put everybody in the strata. If not, if you just say you want to remove the subsidy, I assure you it will be, bring much more uh, difficult considering that we have issue with foreign exchange, you know, we have issue with inflation, you know, a lot of insecurity are still there, you know, selling us on the face. So there's a lot of things that need. So I will advise the economic team of the present government, of the uh, president government. elect, mm -hmm. to consider even the economic policy of the other presidential candidates and make sure they bring it uh, and make sure that we have a better economic system that will capture the immediate solution, immediate need of Nigeria citizen. So you, 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 you are, are, are worried about a, a, a full removal of, of full subsidy um, and you raise the issue of foreign exchange right. and indeed foreign exchange is what we don't have. People are queuing up for school fees, people are queuing up for medicals abroad, and the dollar is simply not there. So if we continue to pay the subsidy, right. wouldn't it be exacerbating this problem of the foreign exchange cost? But I don't know what federal government did to aviation industry. If you notice, from 90,000 Naira F mm. uh, flight ticket, that's reduced drastically to 40-something. More uh, players came in and crashed the price. That is how competition should come in and we should look at it. That's very, very key. So government need to do anything possible to make sure that Nigeria life is better because poverty is deep that we need to move out of it. But, and that's why we talk about job creation and private pr by player must come into it to create a balanced competition. We must unbond with a lot of things. And another thing that is causing this problem beyond even for it, the energy, you know, the power sector, maybe they, should, they need to unbond with it the more. Because you can't tell me that we have uh, one uh, 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 so electricity uh, uh, managing uh, about uh, six states. No, maybe they should. There's a need for us to divide it. By the time we divide it, we know that if I don't have a, I can possibly use a use B. Yes. If that competition comes in, everything we can because energy is another thing that we must look into. Weber is gulping us a lot, and we are not seeing a lot uh, benefit uh, to it. So government must look outside, you know. And another thing is that you know a lot of policy are coming up. We must be careful of policy some and sort. Anything that you can make do from this past government you can continue it's like the issue of infrastructure if it's sustained like that for the next three years Nigeria will move more but other things that need to be you know critically examined and I think economic team is a major thing we need people that are pragmatic that can really see not people that will sit down in their office and be determined economic policy you need to go to the street and see what Nigerians are actually feeling you need to bring up bring up economic policy that affects common Nigerians that is very very so with that I think that will solve our problem but the immediate solution must come in Nigeria must see so called FQ must disappear, you know, we must have available Naira uh, to, to spend, you know, we must be able to, we must be secure, we must be able to move the way we want to move, and there must be availability of credit. I listened to the president-elect uh, yesterday when he was talking about creating student loan, you know, creating credit for students, there will not be strike. I think those things are too early to be mentioned because Nigeria will hold you responsible for anything you made mention of. I think they need to go back, sit down within that two months and give, perhaps, they will be interacting with the current government as they are going to hand over. So they should look at those policies and make do of the one that they need to make do because Nigeria must change and that's what all Nigeria is yearning for. Okay, uh, before I go to the, to, the, to, the school, to the school loans and, and, right. and the strikes, right. I I, I, I listened to you talk about electricity, the energy crisis, and I want to draw inference from Plateau State, for instance. Right. Uh, some years back, I, 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 do, I don't know what is obtainable now, right. but I know you have the public sector uh, energy and then you have the NESCO option. Right. And I remember vividly that in my uncle's house, if NESCO, for instance, wants to do some repairs, they will inform them, they will pre-inform them that you will be out of power service for this number.
number yes, of yes. hours. And that way you can plan yourself around it. And, and in a way, it was more reliable. I can't speak for now because I haven't been there in a while, but it was more reliable than the public sector, uh, uh, the, the public power supply. I think we can only expect that from uh, maybe water board. I think that's the only area now that they will inform me before they even ask. It. Perhaps there's a, a big national assembly going on now. I think it has get to second reading. The bill says that a, an environment like Iduyad, like uh, you know, uh, Ogba in Lagos, like uh, Ariara Market, they can come together and have their own power plant. So if that is Allah, I think that is what this government should also look at. If a particular industry thinks they deserve to have, and that's why it should be on concurrent list, not exclusive list, where individual can come together and say, let's house have our own power plant. Mm -hmm. You know, by the time we have like, for instance, in Lagos, if there could be like eight, ten, you know, different one, then people will benefit take charge of it by themselves and make sure that it functions very. I think that's the way to go. We must unbundle that area as well and make sure that individuals, companies, group of, you know, like a, a, a place like Guarimpa Estate shouldn't be expects power from, mm -hmm. you know, the, the general source. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be like that. Like a place like Idriyad shouldn't expect the same power we are using for uh, residents to be using here with commercial. So this is what we think it, this government should come and do. But then you do that in three years, private sector will come and invest and they'll get their money because in private investment are enough to cater for a particular need and people are paying to them directly and they are also paying to maybe uh, by the government as well. I think that should be fine. They must find solution because we are losing a lot of companies. I can assure you that our countries around Nigeria are benefiting from industries because they are much more, they have more power availability. If you go to a place like Ghana and also most of our industry are moving to that place. And the funny thing is that Nigeria is the market. Mm -hmm. You know, Nigeria with 200 million. Those countries, they barely have 50 million people. So when they produce anything there, they bring it bring down it to them. So we must say Nigerian first at this time and make sure that we invest and unbundle on what we are supposed to. Invest. Because that is the infrastructure that will engender development, create jobs. And MSME will also benefit from because all this industry, MSME find way of also producing small, small things that they make do to produce for further production. It's remain their own inbound. For production. I'm told I don't have uh, much time, but uh, any more time, but I will just crave an indulgence to ask this last one. Right. The fight against corruption right. is one government since 99 has been hammering on. What is the task before this new administration? I think this new administration should also look at technology-wise. We must move beyond saying it. We must move beyond rhetoric. You know, our problem is procurement. Now, there is no corruption without procurement. So this procurement, this Bureau of Public Procurement should come systematically and make sure that anything that does not pass the test of procurement process should not be approved. Because if we can run, tame it from that angle, corruption I will do it. Then corruption and nepotism. I think nepotism is on that side of it as well because if you think because this person is competent, but it's not my family, it's not this, it's not that, and you consider that person, you are going to jeopardize the development of that company of Nigeria, and it will affect our GDP as well. So we must make sure we tame this corruption that is tearing all of us, because it's denying us a lot of things. So this current government, and it must start from them, because if it can start from up, it will cascade down. You know, and the fear must also be there that if you do this, and the, we must strengthen our EFCC and ICPC, and I think uh, uh, fraud something. So we NFI. must look at, uh, thank you, mm -hmm. NFI. We must work on these things and make sure it actually serves us uh, right. I think this present government have a lot of things to attend to. I don't envy them. They need to just hit the ground running and develop Nigeria as expected. I must sincerely thank you, Mr. Ali Williams, for coming on the program this morning and sharing insights with us. Thank you for having me. Have a nice one. Moving on, all prices inched up this Thursday, extending gains from the previous two sessions and signs of a strong economic rebound in China, with the world's top oil importer, though gains were capped by a rise in U.S. crude inventories. Brent crude futures rose 12 cents or 0.1 percent to $84.43 a barrel at 0.445 GMT, while U.S. West Texas intermediate crude futures were up 9 cents or 0.1 one percent at $77.78. Both contracts rose about one percent in the previous session after data showed